What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Dublin, Ohio for session two of FBU Top Gun 2013. I'm Neil Sika. Well, we have some of the top youth football players in the country here this week, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders who will look to earn some spots in the East Bay Youth All-American Bowls and try out for the FBU National Championship, the largest youth football tournament in the country. Entering its third year, the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders will compete for a chance to go all the way to San Antonio. The road to the Dome actually begins right now. We had a chance to talk to one of my favorite people, the Commish, Trey McNeil. On December 7th, one of the great spectacles in youth sports will begin its third campaign, the FBU National Championship. I can think of no more things fitting than to get a... Wow. There we go, <laughs> with the commish. Back. Trey McNeil, welcome back, my friend. Welcome to Dublin and FBU Top Gun, where you're going to identify some of these kids who are going to be trying out for the FBU National Championship. Hard to believe it's year three. I know. And can you believe it, Neil? It's awesome, isn't it? Exciting. Hey, this year, a lot of great things happening. We're going to add sixth grade to the venue this year, all the way to San Antonio. So four rounds for those guys to make it to San Antonio. Like, like you said, we're going to be checking out a lot of players out here uh, for national championship. Yeah, the process of getting involved and maybe getting into a tryout, they can learn more about that here. And you have the best of the best to choose from right here at FBU Top Gun. A absolutely. These are the top players from all our camps here at Top Gun. So we've got some team directors here checking out some of the talent. So it's exciting. Sixth grade, the big headline thing, regional last year and the year before, and now all the way to San Antonio. If you look at the states by breakdown, 32 states plus Oh, Canada. Yes. We've got two yes. teams from Canada, right? Yeah, two, two great teams from Canada. British Columbia and Ontario are going to join us this year. Ontario in the east and British Columbia in the west. So well, let's, get ready. We have a little bit of the pamphlet here that uh, has the bracket unveiled. We'll do a more advanced bracketology show a little bit later on as we get set for the tournament. Last year, it was played over three weekends, the opening rounds in through the regionals, two leading up to San Antonio. Not the case this year. Everything's uh, symmetrical. Very symmetrical this year first two weekends in December meaning December 7th and 8th December 14th and 15th winners advance to San Antonio love it now the video the viewership speaks for itself almost 200,000 people watch the seventh grade championship won by Maryland eighth grade championship won by Georgia kind of to the moon last year now you're maybe looking to go to Mars <laughs> what changes though looking back at the 2012 format whether it be logistical on the field have you made going into this year you know one of the things we're trying to do is just get more regional teams so teams don't have to travel as far so you know we, we compact that a little bit and so that makes for more competition you know creating more rivalries locally and uh, creates a lot of excitement We get a lot more fans in the stands and that's that's what we're working towards this year and one of the things that makes it difficult sometimes is the affiliation of being part of FBU. Some of the best kids out there, you don't have certain states involved, but uh, you can make up for that by having one or two teams in heavily dense areas. For example, Charlotte this year will have a couple of teams. Yeah, Charlotte will have two teams. We'll have four total out of North Carolina. Florida, if I remember it correctly, has uh, five teams out of Florida, and Texas has seven teams this year. I want to know how we're going to keep this thing not being <laughs> SEC-based with the winners, because if you look at the eighth grade champions each of the last two years, Larry Kennedy, state director, said Charlotte's lost to Central Florida, and they've lost uh, to Georgia each of the last two years, but the Southeast Regional has been represented very well with the talent uh, each of the last two. Yeah, absolutely, Neil. You know, question about it. There's a lot of talent in the Southeast. There's a lot of talent in Texas and California, you know, I think some of the keys to having a successful national championship team is recruiting in your local areas, getting out there and finding that talent. And, you know, and that's what they do great in the Southeast and in Florida and in Texas. Well, for parents who are coming maybe here to FBU Top Gun for the first time and they're learning about the camp, they're focused first on their kid playing well here. What can they do in terms of following more up with the national championship and tryouts, local sites? Where do they go for the information? You know, here, here's what we got, FBUNC.com. We've got Got all of our tryouts listed. It's an open tryout format. You don't have to be an FBU person to 
try out. You know, we keep it open in all of our states and all of our cities, so anyone can go online, get the information, walk up and register, register online, so we keep it open for all kids and all ages. It's funny to think that how far the, Can the Canadian teams in terms of the East Bay Youth All-American Bulls have come to now to the point where they can field a couple of teams in the national championship. It's got to make you proud as a commissioner. Oh, just super proud. You know, what's interesting, though, watch for British Columbia. You know, they brought a senior team down here fantastic. Year and, and put it on the U.S. last year. So a little nervous. I, I would hate to see Canada come in and win this. <laughs> <laughs> there would be a few people who would be uh, beside themselves if yeah. that was the case. Next step in the process, Top Gun ends here. Kids are getting ready for their seasons, respectively. When will the tryouts begin? Tryouts have actually already started. It started back in June, run through up to about the first week in November. So, you know, one of the things that we're trying to work with is we have to work around local schedules and local playing. We're trying to get a bunch of tryouts in before season starts. Some states will allow it to happen during the season and some after they finish their season. So we have to keep a pretty broad perspective on tryouts. I'm looking forward to a long road to San Antonio with you for the third time. And, uh, well, you had a long road here. You drove yeah. from Oklahoma <laughs> City. But uh, how was that? Uh, it was long. A long. <laughs> we, we, little stop over in St. Louis and uh, checking out the arch and then, you know, moving on. So we did six hours and then eight hours. Well, so it, little, little people know after all those wild plugs I gave him last year, they made him drive to my backyard here to, to talk about the national championship. And by the way, I, I want to compliment Dublin, Ohio. What a great place here in Columbus and Dublin. And they've really rolled out the red carpet for us. No doubt about that. The top six, seventh and eighth graders on the field behind us. It's the second session of FBU Top Gun. And many of these same individuals will take part in the FBU national championship. The commish, Trey McNeil, great to see you. And we will see you on the road Thanks, to San Neil, Antonio. I'll give you one more wow. Here we go. Yes. Wow, indeed. And wow to close this thing out. Always great stuff from the commish. And how about the sixth graders? They'll get a chance to go all the way to San Antonio this year as opposed to competing at the regional level. So keep an eye out at FBUNationalChampionship.com for more information on that. As you can see behind me, the linemen have broken into 1v1 drills on this first day. Worried about their movement in open space. Do they have the symmetry and what it takes to compete at the highest of levels? You know, 20 NFL teams right now have implemented the functional movement screen, and that's something that campers are getting a chance to learn about here this week. Let's take another chance to learn more about it. Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Ruffalo. I'm a physical therapist and chiropractor here at FBU. I'm a certified chiropractic sports physician and certified in functional movement screening. The FMS is something that is used by over 20 NFL football teams, and it's used at the Combine since 2008. Think of it as a functional combine. So what does that mean? We're gonna do seven different movement skills that your child is gonna go through, your child athlete, and we're gonna come up with a score, a ranking and, rank, uh, ranking and rating of their movement techniques. This is checking on core stability. It's checking on flexibility and mobility, and it's also checking on functional movements. We rank them, if you get a good score and you pass all the tests, it's perfect, is a three. If you have to do the movement with compensation, it's a two. If you cannot do the movement, it's a one. And if there's pain during any of these tests, you the athlete, you have to let me know. You have to be honest, because you can't play in pain. You get a zero. After we do the 14 tests, the seven tests rather, and you get, let's say, a score of 14, well, 14 is kind of a number. I don't want you to get hooked on numbers, but a 14 number is indicative of possible injury. But more importantly, people, you might have a 16 score, but an asymmetry. Asymmetry is a difference of one side of the body to the other. So let's say I get a three on this side and a two on this side. That's more of a problem than having a two and a two. It means there's an imbalance in balance, like your car. If one side is in alignment and one side isn't, which tires are gonna wear out? The one out of alignment. This is an indicator of injury. We have a lot of great things here at FBU. We got Zenith helmets to protect your head. We have Evo Shield to protect your ribs and your legs. But what about protecting just the movement patterns? We need to correct the movement patterns so you don't get hurt in training camp or God forbid in the gym, we want to make sure you play safe and long because the NFL means not for long. Now listen, what we're going to do is 
This is an orientation. You're here at FBU. You want to become a master in your craft. Normally when we screen these kids, there was an 85% failure rate, which means you're the elite 15% of everybody that came to FBU. And in the last camp, 15% passed the test. That means they have great skill, but no foundation. A small foundation with a big skill becomes an inverted pyramid. And that pyramid that's inverted is a top. Once it's spinning, it's okay. But when it stops, it drops. I want a pyramid. Pyramids have been around forever in Egypt. So skill, performance, foundation. We're gonna find your problem, then we're gonna fix your problem, then we're gonna prevent injury. That's the FFP. Find it, fix it, prevent it. Also, FFP stands for Foundation for Performance. We're gonna help you through. You did this part of the My Coach program. So the My Approach program gives you a screen, a value, a free MRI, a free x-ray, so it's a free blood test. But once I find a problem, we have a program in line to bring your bar from here to here. So you become elite all over your body and make sure you don't get injured on the field or in the weight room. Get ready for your FMS screen at FBU. See you there. One of the great things about FBU Top Gun is not only meeting some of these great athletes, but some of their family members as well. The parents, grandparents, everyone who helped make this event possible. Well, earlier this morning, I had a chance to talk to Ryan Thompson, a 10-year Major League Baseball veteran. His son Brock, the MVP of the Indianapolis camp earlier this year. The youth edition of Top Gun 2013 is underway here at Dublin Jerome High School. Another week of exciting action. The best 6th, 7th, and 8th grade talent in the country. I have one of those right here. 7th grade wide receiver start of Indianapolis, Indiana, Brock Thompson, and his accomplished dad, a longtime big leaguer, Ryan Thompson. Great to see you guys. Welcome to Dublin. Well, it's great to be here. Uh, seems like it's right down the street. <laughs> I guess it took us about three hours to get here, so it uh, seems like a really, really nice city. Well, we were reminiscing a little bit. You spent some time in Columbus with yeah. the Clippers when you were with the Yankees, but uh, through all your experiences as a big leaguer, you were an All-American football player in high school. What have you been able to pass on to this guy? And I know you've got some other uh, athletic kids, too. First of all, I always talk about academics. That's one of the first things you know you talk about is academics. And then I stress to him the will to want to be great. I think God gives everybody the, you know, the opportunity to be good, to get to this level. But the guys who succeed and be, you know, to become great athletes, it, you got to have the will. You got to have the drive to want to do it. You got to want to get up in the morning. You can't believe tired is not tired. Tired is just a figure of your imagination. Mm -hmm. You just got to push through certain things. And you know, he's got that. You know, he's got that gene. So, you know, he's got five brothers. So, you know, it's it's been fun watching them all grow up. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, at this point, I'm I'm, I'm a proud pop. I would think so, and uh, hey buddy, you had a one heck of an Indianapolis regional camp. What was the FBU experience like for you being there for the first time, uh, coming away with MVP honors? It, it was really it was really fun. I had fun. Um, it was a great experience because like the coaches getting to meet Harold Jackson, that was like my dream. That was like a really big thing for me. And getting to um, spend time with my dad and watch have my dad watch me because my dad usually coaches. He, yeah. he doesn't watch. He usually <laughs> coaches everybody. So then he had time to watch me. So I had a good time. And well, it was a great experience. What do you think your biggest strength is right now as a wide receiver? You're still growing into your body. Yeah, I'm, I hope my girl, I'm still short stack, so, and then I think my greatest asset is, like, I think my IQ, because I've, I've been playing since I was little, and I've always played up, so I think my IQ is my strongest asset, yeah. <laughs> this kid is uh, media savvy already. I know that's got to be because of Pops. Um, the FBU experience for you yeah. so far, now you're getting on a chance to see some of the best of the best in the country coming from the regional camp. Uh, what impressed you? You know, I, I think, you know, FBU, I've had an opportunity to see a lot of camps and I've, you know, been to some few, a few camps over my years. And it's just how you guys go about the whole layout and how organized it is, it to me is phenomenal. And uh, what you've taught my son and how he now, it, it's not so much that you teach football, it's the education that you give the kids on, and the parents on, you know, athletics, academics, nutrition, you know, all the health awareness, the injury prevention, all those different things, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. And I think these kids are very, and some of the parents would agree with me, they're very fortunate 
to have you guys and, and to have this experience because when I was growing up, mm -hmm. I had nothing like this. You know, it was basically the bare bones. So for what they're getting right now, it, it, I give kudos to you guys. You know, it's, it's, it's A plus. It's A plus on my list. And like I said, as a former professional, you know, it, 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 it puts you guys, you guys are right there and it's, for, it's pushing these guys, anybody who wants their kid to succeed and uh, to go up against the best of the best, this is where it's at. So, you know, I told him driving over here yesterday, I said, you're putting yourself now in a position where you think you're good, we're going to see how good you are. We are going to see how good you are. What are you most looking forward to this week here in Columbus? Going, going up against the best of the best. That's what I want to do. I want to go against the best corners in the nation, and I want to show what I can do. Can you beat anybody in a race in the family? Can you beat Dad in a race? Oh, yeah. He's, he's too slow. <laughs> he's, he's, he'll probably pull a hamstring at the start. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's rubbing in the old injury, the old war wounds. Yeah, you know what? And he's actually right. You know, you imagine having a house full of athletes, yeah. and, and I got to hear that all the time. You know, So what I got to do is I got to pop in a... A VHS. <laughs> you got to show them, but it's not even a DVD because it's so old, you know. I'm like, well, at one point in time, you know, I can move like you move now. But, you know, now I'm old and, you know, but, you know, like I said, man, it's just all around. It's it's very good for what, you know, for what you guys do. And and, and uh, we're very thankful, my wife and I, and, and it's, it's fantastic. I mean, these kids are going to, when they look back on this, and hopefully one day he'll be standing here and he'll be able to say to, you know, to a gentleman, maybe to your son, mm -hmm. hey, this was my experience when I was 13, and he'll be back every year until he goes to college, you know. And it also, it, it helps with his younger sibling, his last, his little brother, Kate, to be able to see, hey, my brother, and watch, and watch, and watch. And then, you know, we, like I told you, we have a freshman at Virginia Tech, seven-footer, and he gets to watch, he got to watch him play basketball, and now he gets to watch him play in the ACC this year. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, I feel like an octopus at times, yeah. and I need eight legs and arms, you know, to be able to be everywhere at one time, in it, you know, but like I said, it's the experiences and it's the development. And, and like I said, when you, at this level, you, you're gonna make mistakes. It was what you do from those mistakes that'll make you a true champion. So he, he's a good kid, he's got good genes. And like I said, I'm glad, I'm proud of his answer, uh, his, his IQ because he's a, he's a football junkie. So, but we're gonna see if that all pays out this week. Great family of athletes, the Thompsons, Ryan, the former major leaguer, and Brock, the up-and-coming wide receiver. Congratulations on your MVP honors at the FB Regional Indianapolis camp, and all the best this week to you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thanks to do for this. Thanks for doing this, Ryan. Man, anytime. We'll continue on with more great stories like this. We got some of the top players in the country. The Youth Edition, FBU Top Gun 2013. So that concludes a first look at session two, day one of FBU Top Gun 2013. We'll be back in Dublin tomorrow to give you a full look at day two. Until then, we leave you with some sights and sounds of the opening day of action. Say go!